The U.S. Arab Radio Network is the largest Arab and Muslim radio network in America, broadcasting throughout the Midwest region Monday through Friday on WNZK AM 690. U.S. Arab Radio features Arabic and English language programming on every topic, from health, food, and culture to government, politics, and legal issues. Listen live to U.S. Arab Radio in Michigan, Toledo, Ohio, and Windsor, Canada on WNZK AM 690. And in Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia on WDMB 700 AM. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok. So join us every day on the U.S. Arab Radio Network and check out our website at www.arabradio.us. Good morning and thank you for being with us. This is Khalil Hashim with U.S. Arab Radio. Happy Tuesday to all and thank you for listening and being with us. We have a great show for you today. It is election day. This is the day we have waited for. This is the day that would end the suspense of who would lead the country and who would lead the free world. Would it be former President Donald Trump, who has yet to concede defeat from four years ago and who is a convicted felon, but very popular among the Republicans? Or would it be Kamala Harris, the first woman to become, if she becomes a president, who comes from a failed administration, the Biden administration, who has not done much in the past four years and has waged two wars in Ukraine and in the Middle East. You know, this issue is very important to our community. We also have other names on the ballot. You know, the election is not just about the presidential candidate. We have on 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 the on the ballot is who would control Congress and who will control the uh, uh, and how it shape the House of Representative, whether it is on the national level or in the Senate and the House of Representative on the state level. Also, there are judges on the ballot. There are uh, ballot questions. We ask you kindly to vote. Please do not be discouraged from voting because you don't like one candidate or the other. Go out and vote. These are very important issue. It is your voice. Make it count. Again, today, I'm honored uh, to have uh, three gentlemen with us. Uh, and we, we, throughout the program, we're going to have uh, somebody calling in to tell us a little bit what's going on at the polls. And we're, I'm going to start with uh, Dr. Uh, Atif Abdel-Jawad, a longtime Washington, D.C.-based Middle East broadcast journalist and newspaper columnist. He is the host of numerous live shows on Middle Eastern TV networks and covers the Washington DC area for Egypt's Channel One as well as its satellite network. We have also <clears throat> our friend Ray Hanania, an award-winning former Chicago City Hall political reporter. Currently, he writes columns for the Southwest Newspaper Group uh, in Chicagoland and the the patch, I'm sorry, online, and is the U.S. special correspondent for the Arab newspaper, uh, Arab news newspaper based in Riyadh. Journalist Mohammed El Satouhi. I hope I said it. Satouhi. I hope I said it correctly. Yes, by the correctly. Right. <laughs> correctly, <laughs> please. <laughs> and an experienced manager with a demonstrated history in the media production industry, skilled in research management, broadcasting, television, and writing. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you so much for being with us. Good to be with you. you. What are your thoughts? I mean, this is a historic election, and it does affect our community. It does affect the entire country. It has struck a nerve with our community because of the war in the Middle East. But it's still a historic event, and we're going to start with Dr. Jawad. What's the scene in Washington, and what are your thoughts? I would say two things. One is that the Arab-American community, uh, particularly in Michigan, has shown their ability to have one voice. But that's not enough. They should reach out to the rest of the Arab community, Arab-American community throughout the U.S. to have a step, at least a step, toward an effective lobby. doesn't matter who you vote for now at this point, but I'm very happy to see those steps, at least initially, being taken to show the American voter and American establishment that we do have a lobby and we do have a voice that needs to be heard of. The other thing is, 
um, apart from um, uh, and having an, an effective Arab American unity, is that I hope that the Arab American community in the U.S. generally would set an example to their fellow Arab uh, non-Americans uh, in the Middle East uh, to eliminate uh, sectarian politics, to uh, eliminate the schism, the Shi'i Sunni schism, or whatever other schism there exists. And I think they have a very important role to, uh, to do that, uh, showing by example that we shouldn't really be focused on our differences. We should be focused on our similarities and our strengths. So the last thing I would like to say is that after a long history of being ruled by white uh, Americans uh, in the White House, uh, exception, of course, is Barack Obama. But Ob Barack Obama is still racially, biracially, but still his mother was white. But I see in, um, in uh, recent candidates, at least one of them, uh, someone who is Indian, Jamaican, no white. So I see this as an encouraging sign for Arab Americans to seek higher office. The second and third generations of Arab Americans now are capable of um, running for office, small or high, but they should do it. They should run for office. Thank you, Dr. Jawad. Uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, very, very inspiring. Unfortunately, historically, <laughs> unity in in Arabs don't fit in the same sentence. Uh, Ray in Chicago, what what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, listen, I've been covering the Arab community for over forty five years. It hasn't changed except in size. We were small in nineteen seventy six. We're bigger today. We have two uh, big populations that have really done a great job with electing local people, uh, Patterson, New Jersey, that region, and Dearborn, Michigan. Um, you go to those two communities, you're going to get a lot of Arab American uh, views, and it's going to it's a moment of pride to see them, mayors, uh, legislators. But in truth, we're still very insignificant in this country. We're brutalized, we're attacked, we're victimized. Um, were targeted by not just by Republican extremists, but by Democratic extremists. Some of the worst legislation has been uh, promoted uh, by Democrats uh, leading, you know, for example, the anti-BDS uh, movement that started in a Democratic state in Illinois. They were the first ones to push it and the second ones to approve it. And now there are 32 states that punish you if you say that you're going to criticize or boycott Israel. So this election, uh, there's only one opportunity, I think, that may change things. But uh, regardless of whether Harris or Trump wins, um, we're in the same ballpark, whether it's 1976 or, or 2024. But the only one chance we have, I think, um, is if uh, Jill Stein, who happens to be Jewish and running for president, who's been marginalized by the media, they pretend like she doesn't exist because... She's favored by a lot of Arabs. If she can get 5% of the vote, we can change the two-party system into a three-party system. Wonderful. Hamad? Mm. Um, I agree with what was said. Um, uh, this is historic in any way. Uh, and it's it's nice to be uh, attending and watching what's going on. Uh, I, the Arabs represent a minority. Yes, we are not effective today. But over the last year, uh, because of what we have seen uh, in campuses, uh, uh, demonstrations, I feel like the new generation will make the difference. Um, they are very strong, very enthusiastic, uh, very knowledgeable about the issues. I think they will be uh, better than us in, in, in many ways. Uh, uh, it's, it's very important to have alliances. I think uh, if we count only our numbers, it will not be much. Maybe in Michigan, yes, we are, uh, we have some uh, influence, but to be effective really in politics in the United States, we need alliances with other groups, many minorities around the countries, uh, blacks, Hispanics, 
uh, other progressive groups. Uh, if we do that, this will be something. Uh, I, I noticed something also. Uh, um, I was in Ohio, for example, uh, attending the uh, Republican convention. In every statement, every speech, uh, they have one thing to say. Radical Islamic terrorism. They repeated it like hundred times every day. Now they don't do. They don't say that because they need some voices in Michigan. So let's not be fooled if we don't hear it now very often. That makes us comfortable. That oh, it's over. Islamophobia is over. It's, we, we are not afraid of. No, we should be concerned when we see. Uh, uh, um, hate speech coming about immigrants in general. This means that same politics of fear is still there and it will come ba back to bite us if we don't stand up and say no to this kind of politics, whether it's against us or against other minorities. Thank you. What we're going to do is we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Please, please stay tuned. Life for Relief and Development has now been rated as one of the best charities for humanitarian aid. Life's humanitarian projects span the globe, and Life is celebrating its 30th anniversary of providing essential life-saving aid to people and communities in 36 countries, regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background. Where there is life, there is hope. And when disaster occurs here or around the world, including being one of the first responders to the Turkey-Syria earthquake crisis, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. We are looking to help the earthquake victims, and we take 0% overhead on emergency donations. So please help improve these efforts. Learn more about our involvement to help the helpless and bring hope where it's needed most. And make your tax-deductible donation to Life for Relief and Development now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. That's 248-424-7493. Bringing you breaking news from across the Middle East and the latest on Arabs in America. Get inside the latest headlines with expert analysis and insights at ArabNews.com. Join over 5 million Facebook fans and over 10 million monthly readers. ArabNews.com. News that matters to you. With more than 30,000 successful in vitro fertilizations, IVF Michigan is now ranked as one of America's best fertility clinics, according to Newsweek magazine. IVF Michigan fertility centers are the recognized leaders in high-quality fertility care. With locations in Bloomfield Hills and nine other cities in Michigan and Ohio, IVF has experts in all aspects of the field. A founding member, American Board Certified Dr. Nicholas Shama, is one of the leading reproductive endocrinologists in Michigan and Ohio. He has performed over 20,000 successful IVF cases, and it's helped thousands of couples fulfill their dreams of parenthood. When it's time to get personalized care from Dr. Nicholas Shama at one of America's best fertility clinics, call IVF Michigan Fertility Centers in Michigan and Ohio toll-free at 855-952-9600. 855-952-9600. Welcome back and thank you for being with us. We are discussing the U.S. elections. Ray, you said something very important that nothing, not much has changed for 40 years you know, wh why is that and what what's going to take to really make a change in our community? Well, I mean, you know, keep in mind that Arabs are the victims of a uh, uh, one-sided political PR campaign. The Israelis, um, they, you know, they understand media better. They understand communications better. They have dozens and dozens of radio shows. We have one, maybe two. Um, they have dozens and dozens of daily newspapers um, we have one weekly newspaper in the country, one monthly magazine, national magazine. Um, the problem is a PR war. And Americans are driven by, you know, perception is reality in this country. So what they're told and what they've been conditioned to believe doesn't matter what the facts are. So that's why candidates like uh, Donald Trump and uh, Kamala Harris will spend hundreds of millions of dollars. I think they. I heard a report that... Uh, uh, Kamala Harris has raised over a, almost a billion dollars in this election. So wow. where does that money get spent to convince you that of what they believe? 
and it's not just politicians. So we're at a disadvantage because we have so few journalists, uh, this group here, um, we have so few platforms to get our view out. Um, we're up against the tsunami of anti-Arab propaganda and bias perception. And, uh, you know, we just try to do our best. And it's not easy. And one last thing, Arab is a misnomer. You know, I'm almost an oxymoron. You know, we say we're Arab, but the truth is we're Lebanese, we're Palestinian, we're Jordanian, True. True. Uh, 22 different Arab countries. And we're very emotional and we don't get along. You know, we claim we do, but in truth, sometimes we don't. Yeah, absolutely. Dr. Jawad? Yes, uh, I'm optimistic about the future of Arab Americans uh, and American politics in American society. And I'm saying that not because I'm one uh, of them, but because of history. What history tells us, we uh, should learn from it. Uh, what history tells us uh, about the uh, um, evolving Jewish community, including the Jewish community. So we shouldn't be ashamed of taking examples and also taking examples from what we see in the uh, huge protest movement on campuses throughout the U.S. Now, we have the Jewish community that started here in this country almost from zero, from uh, immediately after World War II. Uh, we have seen what happened to the Japanese community during the war. Uh, we have seen what happened to the black community and how they struggled for many years to get equal rights. Uh, and so um, uh, even among the American society itself, we have seen what happened to Catholics uh, and and. American society almost rejected Catholicism until finally they elected John Kennedy, and now we have a second Catholic president. So I'm optimistic for those reasons, but uh, um, that needs a lot of work. And uh, I, I, I'm sure that uh, Arab American community will work hard to follow suit and uh, to be uh, a voice, a strong voice in uh, in the society. Ahmed? Well, um, I was in discussion with uh, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Dr. Bishara Bahbah, just a couple of days ago. Uh, he's now supporting uh, uh, Donald Trump. Uh, he's leading a group to attract uh, Arab American votes for Trump. Um, I was totally against that. I think Donald Trump is Islamophobe. I think he is racist. Uh, uh, I don't think it's possible to give him my vote in any way, any time. However, I supported him at the end in our discussion, to, and I told him, be involved, influence him. The important thing is to be involved, uh, uh, whether uh, uh, it's the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. If we do that, this is the the beginning of the real change we are looking for. Uh, if we do that, I, I, I remember when I came here in 92, um, the Democratic Party was really um, anti-Arabs, anti-Palestinians. Uh, 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 it's, it's, it, uh, uh, I remember George H.W. Bush was uh, our choice as Arabs in America who care about the Middle East. Uh, now it is the opposite. So things change over time. So I'm not feeling desperate or anything, but we need to work and work hard. If we are involved, whether in the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, this is the real change we are looking for. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that uh, that you mentioned George W. Bush, uh, the George Bush. H. H, yeah, the second... Um, I remember I was in, uh, uh, reporting in Florida at the time, and I think more than 8,000 Arab votes, Arab American votes went to him, and he won the state by 1,100, whatever it is, uh, the number was. So as a consequence, basically, Arabs put him in the in the White House, and, and look what he did. Um, it, it's, I think... But I was talking about his dad. 
uh, yeah, he's dead. Okay, okay. No, I'm, about, I'm, I'm yeah. talking about the son. You know, yes. the son in 2000 against uh, ah. Al Gore, and you know, came down to 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 Florida, and that leads me to the question here: is that you know, we seem to always make the wrong decision. Um, uh, uh, you know, look look what's going on right now in the Dearborn area. The community is divided. You know, some some people are voting for for Harris. Some people are voting for Trump, embracing Trump. Some people are voting for Jill Stein, and some people are not voting at all. So we don't have that consensus. We don't. We are not really, as as Doctor Jawad mentioned at the beginning, the unity. We don't have that unity, which is it's good to have the uh, the difference of opinion, but the unity, and that's what keeps eluding us. And uh, and you know Ray mentioned something very important, which is we don't value the the uh, the having a really good media, and we don't support a good media, you know. And the question here: What does it going to take to really convince our community to support a good media? Because nobody tells our story better than us. And I start with you, Muhammad. Uh, yes, uh, the question is: Do we really need to be united? Uh, uh, I think this is a legitimate one. Uh, if we look at the Jewish community, they are not really united. Uh, you can see them on the, in, on the Democratic side, the Republican side, but the question is about influence. They are inf influential, whether on the left or the right. If you look at the uh, pro-Israel groups here, they are very powerful. But if we look at the pro-Palestinian groups, You'll see many powerful Jewish voices as well. Uh, so I go back to the same issue. You need to be involved. It doesn't matter of if you are here or there, but make sure to be involved and be influential. And it's not just about raising a voice. It's also about paying <laughs> for it. It's uh, for if, because uh, 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 politics is, is all about money now, as we all know. It's about billions of dollars. It's so always you, been. Uh, yeah, but now it's more because, you know, of the Supreme Court and allowing people to spend billions and billions of dollars, no limit for contributions. So money has become the real factor now behind politics in America. So it's not just enough to be angry and watch Al Jazeera and curse everyone around you and then go to sleep. If you are really, if you really care about the issues, so you need to be involved as uh, in, in politics and also to, to make sure to contribute in many ways, including financial ways. This is the real thing. And this is behind our failure in when it comes to the media as well. Uh, 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 because people don't want to contribute in, uh, to, to start uh, real projects and support you can see uh the, the 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 service we are working through right now we are trying to reach the audience but it is at struggle. the end of the day yeah it's a struggle that uh, uh, Layla and everyone has to struggle every day to make to keep it running so we need to be more involved in this and help the arab media to be more successful to yeah. sustain it and yeah this yeah. is the point. Ray, nobody knows this struggle better than you do. What can we do to convince our community to really support, you know, Arab media? Arab well, there, was, there was something Mohammed said that I agree with that, uh, you know, it's not about uniting the Arab community behind like one person. It's engaging the Arab community. True. So, for example, Dr. Bashar Ababa with Arab Americans for Trump um, and uh, Dr. Masood Bolas, who is the uh, father-in-law of Tiffany Trump. By getting involved, we don't. I, there's no such thing as 100% in politics. I don't have to agree with Trump 100%. 70% of his, his ideas, I think, are great. 30% of them, I don't like. He said some things that I, do, I disagree with, but the only way to change that is to be involved. And so I think Arab Americans for Trump is involved. They're engaged. They're trying to change things. Um, we were engaged and involved with uh, President Biden. Remember his big partnership, he said, with the Arab community when he got elected, he was going to work with us. Um, and that collapsed. And and he appointed 24 Arabs to public office. And he muzzled every one of them. They were not allowed to be interviewed. 
So I think part of the problem is we get involved and then we lose interest because we're an emotional people. If Gaza didn't happen, we wouldn't be talking about this election right now. That's the sad part. The The last thing I want to say is, you know, for the Arab media, I, I work for Arab News, obviously, in the Gulf. And one of the things that Arab News did that really attracted me, and I've been covering politics for 45 years, writing for newspapers in the U.S., was that they created a page for Arab American News, for the U.S. political news. They they have U.S. American Arab U.S. correspondents in the United States. It's not the Middle East reporting on what's happening in the U.S. It's Arab Americans reporting for the Arab News. That's a change from what other Arab media in the Middle East do. They just cover us from where they sit, and they look at us and they judge us based on what they see. So I think that's a change that we need to see. And, of course, this radio station, uh, thanks to Layla and you and everybody on this program, you know, we just try to present our voice out there so that we can help educate people about who we really are and what we really want. Absolutely. Dr. Jawad? I think you have two elements for success. One is organization, and two is money. And until very recently, we have been lacking on both counts. First of all, the Arab-American community started by focusing on Aklaish breadwinning. And I don't blame them for that. Uh, they were too busy raising their kids, sending them to school, getting them to be good American citizens. But the other thing is money. You can't ask somebody who needs money personally for himself, for his family, to contribute for causes, political causes. But this is changing now. And I see the second and third generations of Arab Americans <clears throat> whose father couldn't afford to pay money for political causes, um, running for office, um, city council, um, small community uh, offices. So I'm, for, for, for all those reasons, as I said, I'm optimistic. And one of those days, Arab American will be a competitive force in American politics. We need more time, but we need those two elements to grow. Organization, the ability to organize throughout the U.S., and two, the ability to have a lot of money. We're going to take a short break. Please stay tuned. Every Thursday in Michigan at 5 p.m., award-winning columnist and journalist Ray Hanania hosts the Ray Hanania Radio Show, presented by the U.S. Arab Radio Network on WNZK AM 690 Radio and brought to you by Arab News Newspaper. This season's focus is on the U.S. presidential elections. Will it be Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., or Dr. Jill Stein? Veteran political analysts and elected officials will join as guests. Join us every Thursday at 5 p.m. on WNZK AM 690 Radio for the Ray Hanania Radio Show, presented by the U.S. Arab Radio Network, a special on the presidential elections. Shows are rebroadcast each Monday at 5 p.m. Get to know more about the show at ArabNews.com. At Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic in Dearborn, we provide effective physical therapy sessions in order to limit pain and discomfort. Top Rehab provides physical therapy care for any diagnosis prescribed by a physician, and we regularly see and treat conditions such as stroke, PMJ, fibromyalgia, sciatica, joint pain, and more. We use a variety of pain management methods, including modalities, soft tissue mobilization, and therapeutic exercise. If you're in need of physical rehabilitation or physical therapy, get the highest quality health care at Top Rehab. Most insurance is accepted and we're open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday 8 to 6, Tuesday and Thursday 8 to 5, and Saturday 10 till 2. Call for an appointment today at 313-846-0555. That's 313-846-0555. Choose Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic on Michigan Avenue in Dearborn. Life's too short to be in pain. 
Hey, Michigan, let's think beyond the sink and learn where the water your family drinks every day comes from. Private wells and public water supplies allow homes across Michigan to draw water from different sources, like lakes, rivers, and <coughs> tap into the facts about your home's water source and learn about your home's water quality to protect your family's health. Visit michigan.gov slash care for MI drinking water. A message from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Welcome back and thank you for being with us. Uh, we're discussing the American elections today, the U.S. elections. And again, there are a lot of seats and a lot of different elections going on, meaning that there are a lot of different uh, uh either for president, for Congress, for, you know, this election will determine who will control the Senate, who will control and and, and, and whether, whether it would change the makeup of the House of Representatives and whether the country would go left and right. You know, I think, uh, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a misconce misconception in America about Arab Americans. I think most Arab Americans in America are Christians. They're not Muslims. There's this misconception that they are Muslims, the majority, which is they're not, you know, Arab Americans, I've been part of the United States for a long time, and that includes also we have a large number of the Chaldean community here in Michigan. So the 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 opinion and the direction of the uh, of of where to go, uh, you know, politically is gonna is going to vary. Um, before we continue with the discussion, I think we have Adil is on. Uh, good morning, Adil. Good morning, Khalil. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How are you today? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Good, good, good. Where are you at this point? I am at Gear Park Elementary. It's uh, precinct number 19 in the city of Dearborn. And um, I'm here right outside the precinct where people are casting their votes. I've casted my vote. Uh, I was number seven. 25 people have casted their vote in this precinct, which has about 1,000 uh, registered voters. Okay, um, I think most most people I think voted uh, uh, early, but uh, how how's uh, how is the atmosphere there? Atmosphere is amazing. We have a few volunteers who are volunteering for uh, Jamal Jahmi, who is a school board uh, candidate uh, running for the school board. Um, we also uh, they're talking here to uh, one voter who is about to cast their vote. He's actually coming on on his bike, so. Um, it's a great atmosphere. I, I hope people, more people come out and vote. We expect more people to come out and vote during the day and during the afternoon when they come off work. But I hope people don't skip this election. It's uh, too much is at stake. Okay. You, you, you're a uh, uh, Yemeni American. How is the scene playing with the Yemeni American community? Uh, Yemeni American community is definitely divided, just like the nation. Some people uh, on the presidential ticket I'm talking about are definitely supporting um, Donald Trump for a change. And some folks, uh, many of them, are voting for Jill Stein. And there are those who are still sticking out with the Democratic Party and voting for Kamala Harris. Well, well, and this is this was going to surprise to everybody. Why do you think the uh, part of the Yemeni community are embracing Donald Trump? Well, many of the things I think it becomes the fault of the Democratic Party and the current uh, carnage that's happening in Gaza and Lebanon and in Yemen, too. So um, people feel, as uh, Ahmed Ghalib, the mayor of Hamtramck, he says blankly uh, that he feels unheard, he feels ignored, and so does his community, and that's why he just went to the other side. Okay. Uh, any other thing you'd like to add be, uh, from, from the polling? I'd like to um, thank all of the volunteers, including my son here who is volunteering. Um, I also have another volunteer, Adam. Um, Adam is uh, a student at Etzel Ford High School. And uh, I'm going to ask him here if, if you can allow me why he's volunteering today. Uh, okay. I'm, today for, I'm volunteering today for Jamal and Jamie, uh because he's been experienced for 33 years for Dearborn School Board, and now he's dedicated, trusted, and experienced to run for school board, and he's ready for it. Thank you. We appreciate it. You're, you're, you are the future of this, uh, of this community. Thank you. We appreciate it. 
Mm-hmm. Thank you, Adil. Khalil and uh, we'll, we'll keep in touch. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <coughs> Gentlemen, was it a surprise that the Yemeni community or part of it, uh, not, not the entire community, that would embrace uh, Donald Trump? Let me start with Ray. No, I, I don't think it's a, a surprise at all. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I live in Illinois, which is one of the most anti-Arab states in the country. It's controlled uh, uh, overwhelmingly by Democrats. So the problems that Arab Americans have in Illinois isn't because of Donald Trump. It's because of uh, the Democrats who disrespect us. So, like I said, I mean, the media who we, the mainstream American media who we criticize because they exclude Arabs, they criticize Arabs, they exaggerate anti-Arab uh, headlines. Uh, we tend to want to believe everything they say about President Donald Trump, uh, former President Donald Trump, and and they want us to believe everything they say about Harris. I think they're biased. So when I look at it, I have to look at what's in my best interest. Um, because locally, if I can make a difference where I live. Um, I can then make a difference on foreign policy, but I can't make a difference on foreign policy if I can't even make a difference in my school board, you know, locally. Uh, the only really good thing about this election today isn't whether Harris or Trump win or whether Stein even gets to be a third party. The real key to this election today are those local races, you know, for state representative and Michigan and Illinois and Colorado and Iowa. There's some Arab Americans running for office. One of them in Illinois, Suzanne Akras, um, she's Syrian American. Her husband is uh, Zahar Sahlul, who does Med Global and helps all the refugees and displaced people. Uh, Akras is running in the 82nd District in Illinois, and she said, listen, power doesn't start at the top in America. Power starts at the grassroots level. If you can't exercise your voice on who's going to be a trustee in your local community, you'll never be able to exercise your voice on who's going to be your congressperson or your senator, and you'll never be able to change foreign policy. So that's my hope that I, I don't care who wins the presidency. I'm more interested in will Arab Americans get elected to office at the local level, and from there maybe we can make a change. Dr. Jawad? I think we need to be a little bit more patient uh, and also learn um, from the American uh, political scene to be more effective. For example, we tend to focus on foreign policy. Well, we know we are not going to get anywhere very soon. And the, the idea is that we should focus on uh, domestic uh, issues. Uh, because uh, Americans don't vote uh, on uh, who is supporting Israel and who is supporting Palestine. But Americans generally focus on taxes, on immigration, on uh, such things uh, like we see in this campaign. So uh, I, I don't want us to be... Um, distracted by events in the Middle East and and to forget that really we need to take our place effectively by focusing on domestic issues to begin with. And then when we become a stronger voice, then we can talk about foreign policy. And I, I think that um, that uh, the case of uh, the Jewish American community uh, teaches us a very important lesson. Yes, they are supportive of Israel, but they are also pay more attention to um, democratic versus Republican issues, and that's what we need to do. And I have no problem with Arab Americans who are planning to vote for Trump or who are planning to vote for Stein or for uh, Harris. Uh, the most important thing is that they know that they have a voice and that voice will grow every day if they just keep involved in American political system. Ahmed? Well, I agree. Politics is always local. Uh, we understand that. But in my opinion, it's not either or. Um, 
those who are involved in politics on the local level will usually bo be more involved when it comes to the national level as well and will have their voices heard when it comes to foreign policy so it's not like we have to choose which way to go it's the only the only thing to, to care about is to be involved on either level and this is what we need to do i also think that uh, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, foreign policy we have to be uh, uh, aware of the nuances when we hear someone saying we support israel that's fine we can understand that but we have to ask ourselves and ask them as well what kind of israel you are supporting here are you supporting the right wing likudists in israel expansionist israelis uh, 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 annexing the west bank and gaza is this the kind of israel you are supporting this is what we hear from uh, on the right actually but even those on on j street uh, which is a zionist lobbying group on the on the left they talk about uh, stopping settlements a palestinian state israel that's more peaceful and accepted in the region so not to stop by slogans and big statements and go behind it to understand the details behind the statement and there we'll find many differences uh, 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 between those who support israel on the right or support israel on the left on the left we can deal with them we can work with them we can reach uh, something uh, uh, to work on uh, but uh, uh, those on the right we have to be aware not to give them our support because this is going to be risky this is going to be dangerous uh, on not just on the, for the palestinians but actually will be dangerous on the israelis themselves my my opinion and on the on the whole arab world uh, actually the whole world peace will be in danger if we align our uh, if we find ourselves in alliance with those on the right <clears throat> when it comes to the middle east so uh, i'm i'm afraid there are many problems now coming uh, if trump uh, uh, to be elected now today uh, he might support israeli sovereignty over the west bank and gaza this will be disastrous in my opinion for everyone and this where i find myself saying if i am i live in new jersey i can vote my conscience anyone uh, because it's a blue state but if i live in michigan like some of our listeners now i think it is only one choice which is kamala i, I don't like their politics in uh, the biden administration what they did in gaza what they do in, now and also in, in lebanon but i can't really risk voting for trump at this time adel are you still with us you know uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take a short break we'll be right back Ziad brand quality products from our family to yours Ziad brothers importing offers the finest quality <laughs> products including brands like Sultan Kraft Nestle Bucking <laughs> Gopicon Dana and many more ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best for more information visit our website at www.ziad.com that's www.ziad.com Ziad quality products from our family to yours are you going to start a restaurant or a grocery store soon do you need floor plans and designs call Najee Aboud at 734-744-9796 do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices call Najee Aboud now 734-744-9796 New Concept Products and Design, the trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of $75,000 or more. New Concept Products and Design, new location, 31185 Schoolcraft in Livonia. Learn more at www.newconceptproducts.com. Call Najee Aboud, 734-744-9796. Get ready for an amazing experience <coughs> at a restaurant on 15 Mile Road in Sterling, mm. 
Enjoy excellent hospitality from owners <laughs> Ali Abagdadi and Fatty Bonham serving the best in Mediterranean food. Try Chef Ali Abagdadi's famous shawarma, the best Iraqi grills and food, and the best Arabic and international dishes. Dine in our authentic atmosphere or take out. Call 586-698-2585 or check us out on Facebook. Ishtar Restaurant practices all CDC guidelines and is open every day, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Have an amazing experience today at Ishtar Restaurant, 3625 15 Mile Road, Sterling Heights. Welcome back and thank you for being with us. Uh, we're discussing the uh, U.S. elections, which is today. And hopefully by the end of the day today, we'll know who will become president and the fate of the other races locally. And uh, at this time, uh, I'm, I'm, again, I'm really honored to have this uh, group of, of journalists and, and, and uh, that they've been here a lot longer uh, than, than I have. And I want to give you the chance to share with us what are the issues that our community needs to know that we haven't talked about? What, what, is, what are the most important issues? And let me start with Rajawad. I think we, we still uh, focused on uh, foreign policy. We still focused on Middle Eastern issues. And that what defines the community today. Uh, there are changes, uh, but marginal changes. Uh, nobody is going to talk to you about uh, domestic issues that they care about. A few of them do. But that's my point. We need to reverse that trend. Yes, Middle Eastern issues are important, but not right now. We need to take care of ourselves as part of the American society today. And we need, by doing that, we need to show and prove to ourselves that we are part and parcel of the American political system, that we are no longer just Arab American or Middle Eastern. So by showing us that, by showing the American uh, society that we are part of the society, people around us uh, will no longer look at us and say Arabs uh, in a mocking way. Uh, but uh, I know that this is going to take a longer time. So um, I, I can't think of any domestic political issue that the majority of Arabs uh, care about, maybe save uh, the uh, second and third generation issues to do with local education, uh, issues to do with uh, job and employment rate. But uh, we still have a long way to go. And uh, that's why I'm asking the community uh, through your show to focus more on domestic issues and um, work to grow their voices through a focus, a bigger focus, a stronger focus on domestic issues. Thank you. And um, Ahmad is with us on the phone, Ahmad Hamad. Uh, good morning, Ahmad. Good morning, good morning, Khalil, to you. And I appreciate to all you being on, you taking the time to be with us. Um, what, what are your thoughts about the elections? And, and, and uh, uh, Layla said you have an update. Well, first, I'd like to comment on what Dr. Jawad said. I think I totally agree with him. However, uh, I think the uh, issue of the genocidal war in Gaza, West Bank, and Lebanon became a priority as an exception this year because we're dealing with an exceptional time, exceptional elections. That doesn't mean when the community at this point of time uh, making the genocidal war uh, against occupied Palestinians in Gaza, West Bank, and now Lebanon as their priority and prime issue. Uh, uh, to, to put that on the map, on the political map, that means uh, they are ignoring the other uh, domestic issues. On the contrary, I think uh, if we were not to witness this uh, genocidal war and uh, see ourselves uh, going through exceptional times, I think uh, all issues related to education, health, immigration, economy, etc., were on the agenda of the Arab American and Muslim American community. So we cannot judge and make a judgment about the community position um, 
uh, 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 an, an expression uh, to stop the genocide as a key issue and a prime issue uh, uh, aside and make a judgment, uh, overall judgment about the experience of the Arab American community. I understand that we still have a long way to go, but I think uh, uh, the community position is right and on track. And that's what uh, forced and imposed itself on the two presidential candidates uh, and their uh, persistent uh, effort to try to gain the Arab American and Muslim American vote by the name of the foreign policy issue, by the name of uh, ending the genocidal war in Gaza, West Bank, and Lebanon, and impose and endorse the labor of ceasefire. Now, uh, elections in Dearborn today in Michigan, uh, polls are open, people are voting. Uh, you can sense that uh, people are motivated, people are uh, excited. Uh, still, the turnout uh, too early to judge, too early to uh, uh, to make any comment. We are still in the first hour, two hours, uh, but I see the energy, and I see the energy through the uh, volunteers, the young people, the youth who are working polls across the uh, voting polls in uh, Dearborn, in particular. Thank you, Imad. Uh, Imad Hamad, Executive Director of the American Human Rights uh, Council. Um, Ray, welcome back. And and uh, we were I was asking what is the most uh, important issue that people really really need to know that I haven't asked that people really th these are these are issues that our community need to know. Uh, and again, sorry, the uh, Democrats must have got upset with one of my comments and they cut my internet off in I'm Illinois. I'm telling you, those Democrats, you know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's horrible. You know, if they if you don't do what they want. Uh, to me, the most important issue is to get involved, not just then, you know, uh, angry and emotionally in Gaza. It's What's happening in Gaza is a genocide. There's no question about it. Um, but they can't, we can't just get upset when things happen overseas 9,000 miles away. We need to get upset about our property taxes. We need to get upset about education. We need to get upset about um, safety and crime and how to protect our kids. Um, and we need to be upset when we're not included because we pay property taxes. We pay taxes. Everybody else gets money back from the taxes they pay. Uh, community centers, services, cultural recognition. But Arabs often don't. And we need to make sure that we're included and that we're recognized and we get our fair share of the pie locally. And if we get our fair share pie of the pie locally, we can do something internationally and make a change. Absolutely. Ahmed? Well, I agree that uh, we should focus also on local issues, as uh, my friend Atif uh, just mentioned. Uh, uh, but... Um, we are talking now about different generations. If we are talking about immigrants, uh, of course, they will be more interested in foreign policy, how U.S. policy is affecting their uh, original countries uh, <clears throat> in the Middle East. Uh, but I, I think that our concern shouldn't be that we are very much focused on foreign policy. I'm more concerned that the new generations will be what much more concerned about local issues that they forget about foreign policy uh, because it's different between uh, generations and the new generations we have to make sure that they are raised in a way that they are living their lives in america they care about america their local issues in america but they are also engaged in issue uh, on issue in issues like uh, how the U.S. foreign policy is affecting the Arab world, the Palestinian issues, uh, the Islamic world. It's it's not just being in, involved in uh, about the school system here or, or uh, local issues here. I understand that. I respect that. This is how our life is. But our kids will be living it. But we should make sure that there is a bridge still between them and their original countries from the Middle East. Sure, sure, uh, absolutely. And I think the point was is that we have to have the political maturity before we can jump on a bigger issue, which is I, I agree with you. We're, we're almost out of time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, uh, please, I'm going to ask you kindly to give me final thoughts, be as brief as you can. We only have four minutes. And I'm going to start with uh, Dr. Jawad. I'm optimistic about the future of the Arab American community in America, no matter what difficulties, challenges we face. 
but we need more time, we need organization, we need more money, and we will make it no matter what. Tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, or next year. Ray? Um, I, I think the most important thing is uh, Arab Americans should stop demanding 100% and everything. If some, if I don't agree with somebody 100%, I kick them to the ground. We're never going to find 100% in America, but what we will find is 70%. So we should support somebody who cl most closely uh, advocates our issues, get involved with them, even if we disagree with them, and get and change their minds. That's our real power. Voting is part of it, but being engaged, I think, is very important. Hey, Mad, are you still with us? Imad Hamad, Adil, are you still with us? Okay, Hamad, final thoughts? Final thoughts is to be engaged. I agree with Ray very much. Uh, uh, and uh, to be also concerned about foreign policy. It's not a shame to be concerned about issues in the Middle East. This is what we need to do. And uh, we are not going to be separated from our reality here in the United States because we are living in the United States. So, uh, uh, and my own judgment, which I mentioned before, if you are in a blue state, in a red state, vote your conscience. This is what we need to do. If you are in a swing state, you need to think twice before voting Trump. Thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Thank you to all of you. And again, I'm really honored to to, to have this group of uh, very experienced uh, uh, journalists with us. Um, I, I do agree that politics are local. And uh, unfortunately, we are a very emotional community. We need to really work on that. And and again, you know, we need to have a seat at the table. We don't have to, as Ray said, we don't have to agree with everybody. We are optimistic. And then and, and I agree with Dr. Jouad and I agree with you, Muhammad. We should continue that link to the homeland. The idea is where where are we in the process? Are we mature enough to really exert influence at the higher level if we really don't have the basics, as Ray said, at the local level? And if we can't really elect and 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 we don't have to agree, if we can't elect somebody at the local level in and form a really good force is gonna be tough for us to be at the uh, at the other level. And I encourage everybody who's listening to us to vote. I don't care who you vote for. I don't care if you put a a, a blank a blank pay, uh, a sheet. Just go there and vote. Show everybody that there is a community. This is your voice. If you vote, you exist. If you don't vote, you don't exist politically. And you cannot complain if you don't vote. So if you don't vote, do not complain. Just take it. Whatever they do and give you, just take it. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful and safe thank you to a great production. Mike, Layla, everyone for giving us the opportunity to be with you. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Dr. Jawad. Thank, thank you, Muhammad. Thank you, Imad. And thank you, Adil. Have a wonderful and safe uh, week. Bye now.